So we're in advanced steel and we're just going to take a look at the Great Tech stairs and railings and particular attention to the railing macro. And within that, we're going to focus upon an element to do with fixing lugs, sometimes referred to as panel lugs. This is found under the handrail connections tab here and the sub tab fixing lugs. Currently, we can't see anything in the dialog here and the only thing present is this little drop down menu that's available here. You should see this by default. Um, if you don't see this, there's normally a reason for it. And just a little tip to everyone is to pop back here to the middle handrail to post tab here. And under here, you must make sure under connector properties, the connection type is set to aligned. If you change this to cut, that will actually influence what's going on with the fixing lugs. So we can now see that the rails change there. And if we come back into here, we can actually see there's a little warning message here telling you to go back to the middle handrail to post tab and change that. So I'm just going to pop back there and I'm just going to change that back to aligned. So whilst that changes, obviously we are now going to start taking a look back at the fixing lugs. We can now see that's changed. Obviously we're back here with no lugs set in the drop down. You have a couple of options and we're just going to focus on horizontal lugs for the time being. So as we change that, we should see a change in the dialog pane, but still no change in the model. That's because there is a secondary step here to create the fixing lug. So if we check that, we'll see that the fixing lug will appear and I expect it to appear on the left side, which it has done. Similarly, we're now into here and there's options in here to go other side, which will flip it over to the right hand side of the main baluster post. So as we see that change there, obviously, you can also do both sides, so it should be the left and right of the baluster post. Another thing to note, obviously, is that this is being applied to the whole railing. So we can see, obviously, as we pan through the railing, that the lugs has been applied to every single panel. And just to sort of literally step sideways here, we come back to the, the great egg tree structure here of the dialog. And we can see that we're at the top level here, so we're actually applying what we're setting in this, this uh, panel here across the whole railing. But say we wanted to come down into a sub branch of post two, we could actually initiate this checkbox here and uncheck that. And you'll see that the tabs have now disappeared. So the lugs are not appearing at the second position. So this can be sort of used uh, to set all the lugs via the tree and then turn off individual ones if you don't want them. And sometimes I've seen this used in combination with splitting the top handrail to make a connection within various panels within the flights of the staircase and to enable them to be erected. So let's just uh, pop back there and let's just turn that back on. So I'm just going to turn back on those fixing lugs to the tree post two position. And the next important thing to do is to make sure that you do actually flip back up to the top tree level here. So change to the branch, the top branch of the tree here. Now, as, as we sort of look at that, we can come down obviously both sides. We've got a profile set is the next thing that I would look at. We do have an option to use a plate if you so wish. So toggling that drop down will change this element in here to a plate. Obviously, some of the parameters change with that because now the width and the thickness become available because obviously they're not being controlled by the profile which was selected, which was obviously a flat profile, which had its thickness and, and width defined within the database. So let's just uh, pop that back to being a profile for a second um, because I just wanted to point out another option there is the same as middle rail. So with that checkbox enabled, it means that the tab that you see coming off of here, the lug, is actually the same width as the middle rail. If you uncheck that, it will then allow you access into the database to change that lug size. So now you can see we could come into here, we can access the drop down, and we could change the lug size if we so wished. So I'm just going to tick that back off again so there's no chance of me accidentally changing that. Another thing to look out for is obviously some people uh, may cut these square to the rail. Uh, so they'll cut this square here so there's a nice weld prep already in place. If you don't want to do that, you can actually come down here and under this cut lugs to post on slope. 
So if you check that, it will actually put a splay cut in there and fill in this little segment either side. So now the lug is splay cut and can be aligned directly with that. Um, similarly, you can also affect the, the gap on the rail uh, within this. And obviously there's a couple of drops down here, aligned and horizontal. Aligned means it's following the slope of the rail. Horizontal means it's the horizontal plane in the model. So again, in here, I can, I can change a variable in here. So I could put a small gap in here. At the moment, you'll see that it's uh, obviously very tight against the rail. So we just have to allow that there might be a small weld in there, maybe. So a little bit of adjustment there. Similarly, if I wanted to change the length of the lug, I can actually obviously influence this in here by changing the length. And you'll see the body will grow. And obviously that is also influencing how the bolts are positioned within that. The bolts are typically placed sort of centrally within the lug body, and it does affect obviously the end distances. And obviously because you're on a slope, it is going to affect how this is set out. So if you wanted to, you can actually come in here and there is an option to change length two, which is the right hand side here. You can actually initiate that to a custom value. And for example, if you wanted to change that to be slightly longer, you can actually enter a different figure into the dialog field here and we'll now see this adjust upwards and obviously moving the bolt with it. So just to talk briefly about some of the other tabs as well, obviously you've got your normal sort of access through bolt diameters in here. So again, this is accessing the database for bolts. Depending on which type of bolt you select, you can obviously have a number of parameters available, sizes, etc. Uh, obviously, you get the typical ones for clearance. Uh, you do have an option also just to create holes. So if you check that, it will actually just create holes in here. You won't actually see any bolts actually in there. So uh, some people do like to do that. Some people may not wish to show the bolts. I do. So I'm actually going to just check that back on again. I'm now just going to come to the positioning tab. So this is actually control where you control the number of bolts that you would see within the tab. Obviously, we only have a very small tab, but some other railing may have multiple bolts along it, or even if it's wide enough, multiple bolts across it. Um, so you would adjust that in these two fields here by changing the number dialog. I'm not going to sort of do that because obviously it's going to make it look wrong. The tab's not long enough for that. Um, and obviously, if you do do that, then these other fields will become active in here. So obviously, between rows and uh, between columns. So the other thing you can do in here is also you can affect the, the offset of the bolt inside the field. So uh, when you're working in here, you can actually move this up and down. So if I click in there and I'm just going to put a small adjustment. Well, I'll probably make it exaggerated just to see if it see it move within the field. But here you'll just see the bolt will now move. So you can also adjust that if you so wish within the macro. I'm just going to put that back again to be zero. And, and again, you have um, a drop down here as well available. So you can have a difference between uh, the left side and the right side if you so wish. So that pretty much takes care of sort of applying uh, lugs within that. Um, the one other little tip that I wanted to point out is you, you can see at the moment the, the railing has a, a nice square end on it. And um, the reason that is is sort of there is that you will find there is another checkbox that is sometimes used if you're welding the railing directly some people might want to use this setting here under middle handrail to post use bevel cut on slope so if you actually check that in there you'll see the bevel or the splay cut will change on the end of the rail um, it's still influenced by the gap distance which you actually put under this tab in here when we were looking at the lug so at the moment, there's still a small gap in there, but obviously if I put that to zero, then you'll see it will actually move. Uh, some people do cut them like that. You know, you may wish to cut them square. So if you want to do that, just make sure that you come back into this tab here and actually uncheck this element. So unchecking that is gonna now change that back to be a nice square detail. OK, so we sort of talked about the horizontal lugs, but we do have some other options in here as well. And there is a, a vertical lug. So a vertical lug is obviously where it runs down aligned down the side of the post. 
Now, because we changed that, we're in a different subtab arrangement. And obviously, the macro realizes that you might want to do different arrangements for all the posts or maybe individual posts within the whole assembly. So here at the moment, we need to check this to turn it on. And we can see here that it will introduce a new lug to the side of the post. So obviously, you can see that there. Obviously, it's put the lug in there. So it's working very similarly. You'll see very similar parameters. So obviously, if you wanted to do it out of a plate, you could drop down in here and change to a plate. Obviously, make sure it's the same as the other profile or a different profile if you so wish. Um, but for example, the uh, the post might be one size and the, and, the, and the railing might be a different size. So you, you might want to change the size of the lug. You never know. Um, also, the length, obviously, it's the same, same sort of thing. You can come in here and you can change that. And obviously, if you have the other field activated for the other side, if you were to change the drop down in here to both sides, it'll obviously turn one on on this side as well. So when it does that, obviously, you can influence the length. Obviously, there's going to be a difference in length anyway, because this is a calculated value. Um, what you can do is also influence how it's actually mitered together. So sometimes you might want to go back and actually change this to make it a smoother detail and give a natural form and prep detail in there. So again, if we come back here, remember this little checkbox that I just used just now, if I'm checking that, it's actually going to make these into a splay cut. So I'm getting sort of a natural sort of well detail, prep detail in there without too much trouble. Now, at the moment, it's presently put those sort of parameters based upon what we set at the top and the bottom. So we can see we've got individual lugs at the top and bottom of the post. Um, so what we can do is we continue with this and obviously you can change it under this actually under the type. So it says each middle rail at the moment, which is why you've got four individual ones, but we could actually change it to full height. And when we do that, we'll find that a continuous bar will be introduced. Now, obviously, you're going to need to go in and just check some of the bolt arrangement as well. So at the moment, it's been set to that bolt type. But obviously, we need to change the, the fields as we see them here. So if we look at the dialog, D1 is obviously the vertical number of bolts. So, for example, I'm going to enter three into this and hopefully it should actually populate that with three bolts. And those bolts are actually passing through the two side elements. So that's the two vertical elements here and obviously the post in the middle. So that's that's another little nice feature that is within the macro. You know, you can you can make a full fully framed panel effectively and make it so it's boltable either to a single post or a double feature both sides or you can make it into separate lugs and obviously if you wanted to you can obviously just always remember that you can toggle between this and this should now go back to the other lug arrangement that we created earlier on so that concludes this short introduction to how to use the fixing lugs within the Greytech railing thank you